Yes, I am dancing by myself. Hello, super friends. My name is Annie and welcome back to another episode of Superhero Saturday, where we talk about the arts of superheroes, storytelling, and so much more. Today we are continuing our series into the history of superhero costumes by getting out our go-go boots and our bell-bottom pants and dancing our way to the Bronze Age. If you're new to this series, you should definitely check out the rest of the videos, which are linked in a playlist on my channel, and explore all the way back to the very beginning of superhero stories. But today, let's get that dance floor started. Most comic book historians tend to put the Bronze Age of superhero history into somewhere in the mid-1960s through somewhere in the mid-1970s, but we're going to talk about it in general terms in the 1970s. This decade was as interesting a time in America as any other. After the revolution of the 60s, this new era was marked by a shift away from the psychedelic and also a backlash from a turbulent period of revolution. In politics, this clear division was characterized by a desire to return back to traditional values. The new right, or so-called silent majority, yes kids, this phrase is almost as old as the boomers who continue to use it to this day, claimed that equal rights were an affront to the white picket fence American ideal. And so they fought against both big government influences like affirmative action and desegregation and the continued integration and empowerment of oppressed people groups. It's never easy to convince people who previously held power in a culture to accept those they used to exploit for their own gain, even passively, and this time period was no exception. Because of this backlash, many hard-won freedoms of the 60s experienced a loss in footing in the 70s. On the other hand, there were also continued concerted efforts to roll out liberty and justice for all, including people outside the United States. Protests were still happening everywhere, from the Vietnam War to the War on Drugs and the Equal Rights Amendment that guaranteed all freedoms for women. The ERA, which was first proposed in 1923, was finally approved by Congress in the 1960s. Spoiler alert, the ERA still to this day has not been ratified by all 50 states and is not part of the U.S. Constitution. That means the only right guaranteed by our national government is the right for women to vote, which is included in the 19th Amendment. These weren't the only big shifts in American culture in the 1970s, especially in the world of superhero comics. The old Silver Age artists who defined a new wave of superhero stories were moving up, moving over, or moving on, and a new generation began to fill their seats in the bullpen. These new artists were from a generation that had always known the television screen and comic books alike, and were beginning to learn what the digital revolution would be. They were often even lifelong fans of the stories they were now working to produce, and that gave them the knowledge and the freedom to experiment with them as they would. They would often pitch lucrative crossovers to their audiences, even going as far as to cross over with competing comic book publishers, movie characters, and real life people. Another way these new artists refined their genre was by getting rid of a lot of the fantastic and goofy elements from their most prolific characters. For example, many elements of the kryptonite rainbow, including many of Superman's more superfluous superpowers, were mixed at this time. There was also a push toward realism and relevance in the 1970s. One of the best examples of this was the classic story of Stan Lee versus the Comics Code Authority. The 70s was the beginning of the so-called War on Drugs, which was a big push against the drug abuse that had proliferated during the previous decade. So a lot of superhero writers naturally wanted to show this conflict in their stories. However, the Comics Code Authority was still working hard to regulate content, and according to their rules, no mention of drugs was allowed if the comic was to be considered family-friendly, even if they cast the use of drugs in a negative light. During this time, the U.S. government approached Stan Lee himself and asked him to write a comic book series with an anti-drug message. 
This seemed impossible, Stan thought, because if he wrote anything to do with drugs, he would get censored immediately by the CCA. Stan believed in the message, though, and in the educational power of storytelling. So he and his team crafted a great Spider-Man story showing the negative impact of drug abuse without being preachy. They published the story in spite of CCA disapproval, and it turned out to be a huge success. Of course the story was relatable to the readers at the time, especially young ones. And this first step paved the way for future stories in the same vein. It also caused the CCA to loosen its grip on the industry and gave creators a new breath of freedom. In my opinion, this is one of the ultimate defining moments in superhero history. There were plenty of other breakthroughs in the Bronze Age, however, not all of them successful. Especially in the relaunch of the X-Men series in 1975, we began to see a whole slew of female and POC characters that were invented, repurposed, and popularized during this time. Hit characters like Luke Cage, Vixen, and Shang-Chi. There were a whole lot of misses too. Characters like Red Sonja began popping up everywhere, sacrificing the integrity of inclusivity on the altar of sexual appeal. Since fanboys now filled the seats at both Marvel and DC, and the CCA had lightened its grip, everyone wanted to draw more skin and more shallowness than was necessary, which was a timeless blow to oppressed peoples everywhere. However, in spite of the ups and downs, both in the superhero world and in history itself, the Bronze Age of the 1970s was a time of artistic growth and expression that would leave its groovy mark on history. And now let's move on to the application portion of our class today by designing some groovy costumes for my two characters, Cannonball Cooper and Redemption. Let's first take a look at the male costume for our Bronze Age example drawings. When I started to work on the redesign of Cannonball Cooper, you can see that there's not too much change here to the basic design because most superhero male character costumes are pretty much the same. We did give him disco style boots, a chunky belt, and a square hem and collar, which would actually do good to develop into the modern version of Cannibal Cooper's costume. We also gave him some wispy Farrah Fawcett style hair that would make him fit right into an episode of Wonder Woman. We also gave him a slightly more lean, muscular shape to the drawing and darkened the colors just a little bit. Unless you were actually inside of a discotheque, fashionable colors were a lot less saturated than in the 1960s. All in all, it's kind of a strange look for Chris Cooper, considering his modern aesthetic, but it's very Bronze Age, so I'm happy with it. And now let's take a look at female superhero costumes and incorporate those into our redesign for Redemption. We're actually going to shift pretty far away from the Silver Age version here. Instead of a mini skirt, we're putting Aida in a groovy halter top jumpsuit. During the 70s, some of the most popular, powerful females on the screen included the 70s version of Wonder Woman and Charlie's Angels. I can totally see Redemption and a few of her friends kicking butt in matching jumpsuits like this one. Her hair is going a lot more natural this time around, so we've got it styled in a bouncy little afro. I'm also giving her a similar chunky belt, some big giant bangles on her wrists, and a headband. Finally, for cosmetics, we're giving her the light blue eyeshadow and soft lips that were popular during this time. I'm actually really excited about this costume because it looks a lot closer to her modern one in terms of coverage and functionality, so I can totally see this as a precursor. So there you have it, Cannonball Cooper and Redemption dancing their way into their Bronze Age costumes. The era of disco had a powerful effect on all American popular culture in the 70s, and superhero stories were no exception. Thanks so much for watching, Super Friends, and again, if you missed the previous videos, all of the other eras of comics so far are analyzed in the rest of the videos in the playlist on my channel. We're just going to keep chugging our way through history until we get to the modern era, so prepare your hair for a totally tubular 80s tribute. If you liked this video, go ahead and give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more superheroic content every single Saturday. You can also join the team by following us on social media or supporting us on Patreon. And if you'd like to see Cannonball Cooper and Redemption in their natural time zone habitat, you can go to our website at www.fearless9.com and pick up a couple of books. Thanks again for watching Super Friends, and we'll see you next week.